What's up guys, Steven Duxer. Welcome to the new YouTube video this week. So today we're gonna to talk about a really hot ticker, which is called RKDA. And a lot of my students that made the same mistakes on RKDA, and when people make their first mistakes, they tend to make another mistakes again, uh, especially on the same day. So just be very careful if you made your mistakes. Let's say you took a huge loss on uh, some ticker and the stock is still running and never try to place a second trade especially on something like a multi-day runner or a huge runner with tiny flow like RKDA before we get into RKDA we have a conference coming up into the next week it's literally the last minute make sure you register your tickets I will put a link below so we have about two tickers this week and uh, one of the hottest one is RKDA of course if you take a look at the chart stock was trading huge volume on Friday last week and you traded a lot of volume on Monday. Now let's take a deep dive into the chart. When the stock does a panic, when it starts to gap up, people are too eager to short into something like this, short into a perk. And uh, personally, I did as well. I shorted around three, uh, I think it was around high three, so 306, somewhere like that, uh, 305. And then stock was panicking like usual. Uh, like a failed gap up short uh, just straight out of the gate and the stock did panic a little bit and when it starts to crack the support around 2.73 and you can see this tiny little bit difference if it goes to one minute chart you can see it a little bit clearly once it cracked through that 2.73 and tends to crack new lows and it took really thin volume to almost gained up enough over 75 percent of this entire gain of, oh, sorry for this entire panic. Uh, so whenever you see a panic, a major panic, something like uh, very heavy volume, 600K, 500K, and stock tends to come back with really thin volume, and the stock tends to come back with really thin volume, and that's where you should be aware of potential squeezes coming. So when the stock gets about uh, three, I think it was around 289, I started to cover my shares. As soon as I covered, the stock did a huge squeeze, almost to 3.5. Now in this type of situation, you have to be very clear, trying to understand where the short seller is and where the buyer is. Because when the stock does this kind of huge movements, the ticker is very, very emotional. There's gonna be very fast panic. There's gonna be very fast spikes. Now, especially in this case, so first the stock tends to break out of the pre-market high, it becomes a pre-market breakout, that's number one. Second, the stock is breaking again, it's gaining liquidity throughout the time. So when the stock is gaining liquidity, which means it's driving more buyers into this chart or into this ticker, the stock is, tends to trade more volume than usual. When the stock is getting tons of volume and it's on low flow, the stock tends to remain bullish throughout the day. Then take a look at the chart. If you see this huge spike, you can see short sellers are covering very, very fast because they're nervous of stock tends to break out again. Now, when the stock spikes this fast and it's getting halted, you know there's other short sellers are still stuck in this chart. Stuck in right around uh, 2.8, 2.9. So when they stuck, they want to get out. And when the stock tends to panic, they, want, they also want to get out. Uh, that's why panic always holds in these type of charts. You can see people short it in around mid three or lower three. It's draw a horizontal line, so average short to be around three, 3.30. When the stock does a panic, let's say if I short it around 3.30, and start tends to panic into my level. Um, what I wanna do is I just wanna cut even and be done with it because I don't wanna try to short this chart anymore. Uh, or people will start to adding. So the first mentality, people wants to cut even and when I cover into a panic, will causing a buying pressure and that buying pressure will form a support for the chart. So you can see multiple times the stock panicked into this 3.7 area. You held about five times because there's so many short sellers that got stuck around lower three-ish and the stock never tends to come back and people are still shorting or adding then there's caused a multi-layer of short sellers there's gonna be people shorting around 2 220 there's gonna be people already shorted around three dollar ish so it's causing a layer of short sellers getting squeezed let's talk about chain reactions so when the stock tends to panic and the first level of short sellers are so close to the second layer of short sellers so which is uh, right here, this is the first level. This will be the second level. 
So when those two levels are very close to each other, remember this, the stock is very unlikely to come back down. So in this case, I was tempted to go long on RKDA, but there's warrants on um, $5 each. So I don't really wake up and see the stock is exercising warrants, there's potential offering going on. That's why I didn't go long overnight, but you gapped out in the morning and uh, it went to six. And today was a massive headache. There's people buying and selling. Uh, since there's so many people got stocked or got bought out around this area, and people still looking to break even uh, and start to re-break again. So six dollars become another support around right around here. Uh, four dollar, there's another four dollar support. So f uh, dip will be around six dollar. The high of the consolidation will be six four sixty. So six dollar, uh, it's pretty close to four sixty. So when the stock tends to panic, let's say the stock ran about three to five days and when it drop into the support it's going to be very difficult to crash first you're going to crack this six dollar support first then it's going to crack this four dollar support second and since those two layers of support are really close to each other and it's unlikely to crack um now if you take a look at rkda uh, when the stock goes red just, just look at the chart the stock panic 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 then tends to squeeze before the market close so this is the type of multi-day runner that you have to be very, very careful with. I will lean towards the long side because I don't really suggest going on the short side, especially on a chart like this. First, there's multi-layer support. Second, the stock is trading huge volume. And third, when the stock tends to crack, basically in the morning, if you're on a short, if the stock goes red, you're basically shorting into double layer of support. It might be a good swing, but it's not gonna be like a fast 50% drop on intraday. So on this chart, I'll attempt to stay away unless this one can spike to like 12 or 13. Then it can be shortable, again, since the price are far away from these massive support. So that is my thoughts for RKDA. When the stock is not creating enough range and the stock is panicking and there's multi-layer support, it's gonna take days and weeks to crack. And I don't wanna really hold that long to pay very expensive borrow fees. For future-wise, if you guys look at the multi-day runner like this, not every single multi-day runner is a shortable. It does have a very good risk reward. I'm talking about intraday shorting, not a swing shorting. So this is the chart that you wanna mark as not really tradable. So that is all my thoughts for RKDA. If you learned something new, press the like button or press the subscribe button. Leave a comment below about what you want me to talk about next time. And if you guys wanna to come to the conference, this is the last minute. This is the last minute to register your tickets. That'll be the end of the video. I will see you guys next time.